by the time uh, Jimi Hendrix come through Nashville, I had uh, Memphis and Chicago under my belt. See, and I had the Delta feel in my music. That's what drew them to me. So he had basically everything else pretty good, but the Delta feel of the blues is what he was liking. See, and he had uh, records back at the house his father had there, but he hadn't rubbed elbows and nobody could play the blues like he had heard them on record till he run, bun, bumped into me down in Nashville. I remember the first time uh, I met Jimi Hendrix back in the early 60s, 62 there. He was still at, in, the, uh, in the Army at Fort Campbell, you know. And uh, I was playing in a band there uh, in Nashville at the New York Club there, 12th and Charlotte, by the name of the Imperials. And we'd play six nights a week in the, in the, in, in, in the New Era Club, then we'd go to Clarksville uh, on Tuesday nights. So and the soldiers come down, you know, like soldiers come down to towns, you know, around. And one night we was in there and this young man came up to me. Well, that night he had sat there and watched the show, see, and uh, then he wanted to know where I was from and all this kind of stuff, you know. Then he wanted to hold my guitar. Whew, I said, well, now, you know, kind of skeptical about letting anybody hold my guitar because you can either drop one if you don't know how to. Oh, I didn't know he played, you know, or nothing. So he said, uh, I'll just sit the stage is about uh, a couple of feet from the floor. He said, I'll just sit right here. And so I let him have it because I want to, you know, time for me to go take a break. So I let him have it there and he said, uh, just leave your amp on there. Just you know, I usually leave it on standby, so I left it on the low there with, it, with him. And when he took it and when he put it on, he turned it upside down, I got another cold. He was oh, man. So uh, he sat there at 30 minutes there in a mission there tanker with my guitar. So that's my first time laying eyes on Jimi Hendrix. So soon after that, every, every Tuesday night we go up there, he was there, you know, watching. And um, he soon he got out of the army soon after that, he and Billy Cox, then he came on over to Nashville to where he could hang out with me then, see, once he got over to Nashville. I would, I would say, I would believe that I had a lot, because he could have went anywhere when he got out of the army, you know, he'd been all around the world, but he had run into something here that he, he he felt that he needed, and he did need it. He needed, because he's the, one of the few blues artists that wasn't born down below the Mason Dixon, you know what I mean? And uh, so he got a chance to come over and rub elbows with me, see, then you, when you rub the elbows with a man, you can get off into his head, you can ask him things, you know what I mean? And then you're running with him and get to his way of thinking and, and that stuff there, you know? And uh, so uh, he came over to Nashville and uh, every time he'd get a little old lick or two, he'd come in and he'd want to show it to me. But this one particular night, I was playing at a place called the Baron Club down at 26 in Jefferson. White boy out of, the, out of the downtown Nashville, they'd come out there and open up. He was real nice, streets down the wall and everything. And the same band, then period, we had to move down to, from the New Era Club down to the Baron. So Jimmy Hendrix was living uh, about two and a half blocks down at a place called the George's House of Glamour that was adjacent to the Del Morocco Club, but that's where they got a gig. When he and Billy them came over, they got a gig there at the Del Morocco. One night, Jimmy had, um, I guess he, he, he done got to where he was doing pretty good. So he, he come at me one night there, you know. I was sitting at the bar that, I'm gonna say intermission again here. I'm sitting at the bar there and uh, they came in the door. Larry was pushing the amp and uh, Jimmy standing back there with his guitar. You know, he never have a case for his guitar that while he's around Nashville there. Larry doing all the talking. Yeah, Johnny, he coming at you tonight. Yeah, man, he going. And I, I, I had a little drink. I told him to drink up. Yeah, he said, yeah, you better go on and get another drink. Cause he go, he, he come at you tonight. So I said, well, go on, set him up. I said, uh, when we go back up there, we'll call him up there. You know what I mean? So uh, we got back up there, and Red McMillan there, that was the uh, MC and the band leader at that time. And we called back there. Johnny, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Jones, the battle of the guitars. You know, Johnny Jones and Jimmy Hendrix. So that just had him sit up there, come up there. and. Uh, we got to swapping licks. He had a little small, what was that, a, a Fender Reverb, a Fender, one of the small Fender Reverbs, I think that's what it's called. I had four tens then, I believe, and I had that great big dual showman kick back, and uh, I was playing one of these, this was 335. I was pumping one of these through there. That, 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 <laughs> that showman had 215 these JBLs there, man, you know, big 100 watt pumping there, man, you know, I had, and, uh, and, and you know, I got a big tone anyway, and I imagine what it was like coming, through that on him. We swapped licks back. I throw, he threw a lick, I throw one back on him. He never could get loud enough and his tone was low. So I was getting all the applause. So after, after it was all over, we came down to Larry Grab. Man, what you 
what you doing up there? You don't let that man kick your butt all over the place. He said, he said, but well, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy talk like a white boy. He says, I, I was trying to get that B.B. King sound. He said, man, they, they hell with B.B. King. Come on here. So Larry, they went on out the door, man, just dragging all that. But I told him the next day, man, that uh, he didn't do bad. It was just how loud he was, you know what I mean? He got it down pretty good by then. So that's this shootout with me and Jimmy Hendrix, man.